hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel so today in this video the properties of the structural element shall be defined and shall be applied by making the compound of the each element uh, like beams columns or slab and in the previous video the orientation of the element has been done as well as the addition of element support system constraint or diaphragm and application of seismic mass or seismic weight of the structure has already been defined so today let me go to the component properties here uh, there are six properties in component tab the first one is the material we can see all type of material we have to use in the structure for uh, modeling purpose for example here is uh, it's a inelastic 1d concrete material mean one dimensional concrete material means it's a concrete the first one is the inelastic steel material non buckling mean we call it uh, or we assume it as fe 500 or fe 400 or fe 550 for the structure then these are the inelastic uh, steel material for tension only for buckling and inelastic shear material for the wall diagonal compress compression material for the wall and these are the elastic material for fiber section slab or shell so here in uh, linear analysis uh, these uh, things are not needed but while doing the nonlinear uh, analysis or performance based design or time history analysis in performance 3d the respective material definition has been uh, mandatory so without uh, the definition of this material for example if we take the reference concrete with the confined and unconfined concrete and river material the further any further works cannot be uh, continue without uh, the material definition so here another one is inelastic tab in elastic there are also different parameter so which parameter we need to assign in our structure that should be defined in its uh, in this tab so for example if you have to assign the moment hinge in moment hinge or moment hinge rotation type for the line element or the beam element uh, we can select this one and this uh, trilinear backbone relationship uh, force deformation relationship or in the moment hinge simply the bending moment versus um, bending moment in y direction and deformation in x direction and these parameters have to be applied here in different cluster so here this model is only for linear purpose we shall uh, discuss more detail about these nonlinear hints while doing nonlinear analysis so for now let me go to the cross section part or simply material first of all we have to assign elastic material for the slab so let me choose elastic material for the slab or shell okay let me name a slab the unit is mm and newton so here we have to assign the stiffness parameter so here if we take the m20 concrete and then the young modulus of elasticity is uh, 22361 which comes um, with the formula 5000 root fck when position ratio for concrete is 0 0.2 so let me check and save after that let me go to cross sections here there are different cross sections for beam column shear wall and slab so let me choose first the beam cross section go to new beam 230 into 350 okay then our beam is rectangular in shape the width of the beam is 30 mm and depth of the beam is 50 mm then if we calculate if we press the calculate button all the parameter has been calculated here and fill uh, the axial area torsional inertia shear area and bending inertia so for the material stiffness we already uh, said that the modulus is 22361 for m20 concrete position ratio for the m or for the concrete is 0 0.2 and this shear modulus is calculated by the formula which we have already studied in strength of material so let me check and let me 
set the shear modulus is calculated here with the formula with in the relation of young modulus and shear modulus with the poison ratio so here we cannot go for inelastic strength at this tab now so the section of the beam is defined similarly the column section size also to be defined column 350 into 350 okay then similar like uh, beams it's 350 350 calculate 22361 for m for m20 concrete 0.24 concrete poison ratio then let me check then another one is the slab so let me define new slab slab 125 okay then this material is the slab we have defined in material tab. The thickness of the slab is 125 mm. And for membrane also, the thickness of the slab is 125 mm. So here, thickness for weight calculation means we have to uh, calculate the dead load of the slab. So for that purpose, the thickness is 125 and weight density of the material uh, or weight density of the rcc is 25 kN newton for meter cube it means 25 into 10 to the power minus 6 in newton per mm cube okay the section of the slab has also been defined and after that we have to make the compound for each element or for beam and column element so Go to frame member compound here are different options frame member sure well damper brb brb compound so let me go to frame i name the column so here the component is the column is treated as elastic section which we have already defined the component so the proportion of unassigned length is one and let me check it so here the compound has been made with the elastic column element okay if we check this this is the whole column element with the elastic section here we can add the in zone also we can add the in zone also for example in zone for a beam or column according to aci 41716 or asc 41 so for simplicity now i cannot model the engine for this structure similarly for the sulfate propose the sulfate for unit length for each compound element has to be assigned so for column let me go to calculator the size of the column is 0 0.350 into 0 0.350 into 25 means 3.025 kilonewton per meter or newton per mm six to five okay then i define beam compound beam compound similarly for basic component here we can select the beam reinforced section it's one let me click add and go to self weight section the beam is 0 0.23 into 0 0.350 into 25 means 2.0125 kilonewton per meter or 2.0125 newton per m so the compound has been finished and let me close this tab and go to element f and we have to assign the properties which we have just defined for the beams and slab so these green element are the sorry blue element are the beams go to properties staff select all the beams then assign component frame member then it's a beam component and let me check assign so these beams are assigned as elastic beams size of 230 by 350 similarly let me go to columns all the columns has been selected so properties assign component frame compound column then assign if you want to show the properties of assigned member this can be 
come with the show properties tab so here the compound has been assigned and the properties has defined so for the slab assign component slab or cell elastic section slab component is compound is 125 slab assign and show properties to check whether it has been assigned the properties are not okay so here the properties of the beam columns and slab has been assigned after this we go to the load tab here there are three options three patterns for the load the first one is the nodal load the second one is the element load and the third one is the self weight in the tabs the self weight of the structure has been automatically taken by the software uh, in the load pattern if we uh, set a factor one in the load pattern the dead load of the structure has been uh, calculated by the ETFs, but there is a different, slightly different in Perform 3D. We have to assign the self weight of the structure, element load, and nodal load if we have any nodal load. So, in the next video, we'll work or we'll define the load patterns and assign the load to the to this structure and. Unlike the ETFs or other finite element software, the load for the slab or the superimposed load in the slab, live load or any dead loads uh, can be changed into the uniform distributed load and the load shall be applied in the beams, not in the uh, form of area load. So this is the difference between uh, other software and perform. So uh, this will be little tedious and time consuming but we have to do like that assigning the load all the area load in into the beams converting into the uniformly distributed load and applied in all the beams so for uh, for the case of no nodal load if we have any node loads and we have to select the node and apply the node loads what we have for example if we have water tank in the top we can divide the uh, tank water tank load into four nodes calculate that nodal loads and assign the node uh, loads in the four node at the top in which the water tank is rested so in the next video we shall work for or uh, define for the load pattern load pattern and sections as well as limit state and run the structure after defining the after defining the load cases and load series and finally evaluate the model properties of the structures starting from the model time code so this much for today see you in next video bye bye